What's it like owning all of these cars? Major pinch surreal dream. Ford GT. Mercedes AMG GT Black Series. McLaren Senna. Lamborghini Huracan STO. Today. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to today's video. Now today's video is going to be slightly different to what I normally do. Not going to be filming any abandoned buildings and not going to be filming any rotten or rusty cars. In fact, quite the opposite. Now many of you will know that I'm a massive petrol head, love cars. Today we are going to be going to a friend of mine's car collection. Now he is a very well known YouTuber. His name's Tim. Uh, many of you will know him as Shmi, Shmi150. Um, and Tim has kindly invited me along today to have a look at his collection of incredible cars. Uh, cannot wait, so let's get this journey started. I cannot wait to get there. Let's go. So today I'm driving my 1998 Mercedes C240. Now I have two of these cars. The other one's a C200. This one has the V6 in it, so it's slightly faster. And I might, if I'm lucky, be able to give it a little squirt up here, join the dual carriageway. She goes right for an old car you know now i've got some big plans for this car so stay tuned for those videos in the future let's go let's get up there cannot wait to get there i'm so excited for today One, isn't there? Go on then. Dear me. <laughs> nice. Welcome to the M25 car park. I'm having a bit of deja vu here, so I am actually 56 minutes away from Tim's, and I can't help but notice this big black ugly cloud in front of me. Now, this happened to me when I picked my golf up. The day started absolutely gorgeous, sun, blue sky everywhere, and then I got about an hour away from the location, and then that happened. And I'm in the same situation today. Unbelievable. <laughs> right, pretty sure I'm at the right place. Welcome. Ah, hello, <laughs> hello, I am. Wow. Oh my goodness. Cool, hey? I tell you what, this is the most incredible car collection that I've ever actually had the pleasure of walking around. <laughs> I must say, this is just absolutely amazing. What's it like owning all of these cars? Major pinch surreal dream. There's no other way really to describe it, especially when you see like this with all the colours under the lights. It doesn't feel like reality. No, it, no. It honestly doesn't. Like, this was 
beyond my wildest dreams a few years ago <laughs> <laughs> and to now be here and to be able to show you guys around yeah have a look at some of the cars I can automatically unlocking as we walk past as you walk key. past it it knows you're here <laughs> you know, we've got the daily cars, Taycan and the G-Wagon. We've got the really cool supercars, um, obviously all in unique colour combinations, crazy specifications. And yeah. then we have you know, a few other cars that are special or limited, have a reason, a personal story, part of the collection. Um, and a couple of friends' cars that are here. That's the two over there. Yeah, yeah. temporarily at the moment. And then a few that are missing right now. The, yes, I noticed the empty spaces. Yeah, the SLS Black Series is in Germany just having a few things done to do with the heat because I did some upgrades to it and I drive it hard. The GTR Roadster is actually back at my home right now. The GR Yaris is out and the GT500 is in the US. So wow. kind of crazy even for me that there are four cars missing. <laughs> those four cars somewhere and it would be cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, these two are basically the flagships, so I guess. Yeah, say, yeah. At the moment, the Ford GT and the McLaren Senna. They're both about three years old now. Um, wow. GT has had a crazy innings because... You might have seen this car went all around the USA. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, flew, I flew it into JFK, drove around to the cargo terminal, picked it up and drove it to Times Square, <laughs> which still is like, that makes no That's sense. That's mind-boggling. That's yeah, like... on, on the UK plate. Yeah. Um, which is cool. And then the Senna, I've had quite a few good outings on track. Nürburgring, for example. With that. Yeah, I watched a video of that and it yeah. looked amazing. It, it really is, did. It's insane. But I tell you what's really interesting is going in the GT Black Series at the Nürburgring. Okay, yeah. Which is very close to Senna performance. I really? I Senna would be a lap record holder. That's, that. that's pretty cool. But it's not quite so intimidating. Mm. And that makes it more approachable and you feel more comfortable doing lap after lap. And being a Mercedes, so let's face it, it will just work better. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. It, it will take more of a beating. Um, but, you know, when you're looking at the cars on this side, we literally got pretty much all the colours of the range. I'll say the Lamborghini definitely jumps out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that, that's that is the, like... That's the latest addition to the collection. This stupidly metallic viola bast, as it's called, this effectively glitter paint. It, it is really, like, in your face, isn't it? It, it really, really jumps out. It's lovely. And then I know that not everybody likes a Lambo in metallic pink with yellow accents. Yeah, yeah. Like, when people tell me you've ruined it, it looks horrible, it's like... That was kind of, you know, it's a Lamborghini. Yeah, it's, my first it's like Lamborghini. you either love it or you hate it. And I, I love it. I think it looks really good. It, it's, you know, Lamborghinis are the cars to go crazy with in the first place. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to have a car like this, the STO, with all of this funky, crazy bodywork and aero and wings and snorkels, and, you know, look at all this at the front. Why not just embrace how mental it is? That's right. Yeah. And don't hold back. Doesn't the whole front end lift on this? Yeah, yeah. it does, doesn't it? it? Just give you a quick demo of this. It literally. Oh, wow. <laughs> transformer style. And this is one single carbon fiber piece. I'd hate to think how much that costs. I can tell you. Go on. Somewhere approaching 100 grand. <gasps> you don't want to have to replace wow. it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that one piece. I mean, it's super, super light. Unfortunately, gone is much practicality. Yeah. You would have a small boot here. In trunk up front but um we could barely get a football yeah there, instead you get some vents that get full of leaves <laughs> <laughs> which are all to do with the airflow coming up oh god um four, as all the cars on this side of the room are really they're all yeah. track versions um this sounds fantastic v10 naturally aspirated um and it sits here kind of at the front of the garage at the moment just yeah it's, it's so new and so wild but what's you know what's quite interesting to me is these cars Fundamentally, if you're not a big car guy, you're looking at these and you're thinking, they're all supercars, right? Yeah, the yeah. Same thing. They all do the same purpose, but they offer such different driving experiences. Yeah, I can Even imagine they do. between the Lamborghini, the Ford GT, and the, the McLaren Senna, the way they approach it is so different. And that's what I love, yeah. being able to experience and bring the audience along for, Absolutely. Kind of, for these kind of drives and these kind of uh, you know, outings. And the Senna is sitting down in race mode at the moment, so it has this hydraulic suspension that can raise and lower. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So normally for road use, you'd have it sitting a little bit higher in the arches. Yeah. The front splitter would be up off the ground as well. But when you put it in full race mode, full attack mode, you have all these like active flaps and things in here. Oh so these God. actually open and close as you're driving. That's pretty cool. Yeah, matching obviously with the wing, which can pivot up fully. Yeah, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's the doors on this I really like. I've always loved these sort of doors. Yeah. I mean, you pull up in a petrol station, you fling the door up in the air, and it's just like, ah. Oh. 
That's yeah. cool. <laughs> Always got to check, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the full, like, dramatic effect. And this, although it's tinted piano black, is, of course, a window. Of course, yeah, so yeah. when you're in the car, you're looking out at the pavement. Yeah. <laughs> that must be quite a, like, strange sensation, driving along, looking down and seeing the pavement sort of moving past you like that. Well, you, you don't tend to do it. To you don't. <laughs> that way, not down there. But for the passenger, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. For the passenger, you know, these are all super light. Um, Nearly Ooh. taking out my own door now. Um, <laughs> obviously, we've got a few center parts. Yeah, there, there was a bit of an incident with that car, yeah. wasn't there? We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute, yeah. Um, this is actually the car that I've owned the longest, the 675 LT Spider. Um, I've had this for five and a half years. Wow. Amazing. Um, how quickly that time flies. It feels like yesterday, would yeah. you expect. One off paint color, um, custom made it. Um, which is always quite fun, although it was a nightmare when we had some paint uh, oxidation, oxidization issues and had to get that sorted. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, 17,000 miles later, still running strong. I've done many track days with it. Yeah. Lots of ring laps with it. And I think it's one of the best McLarens ever, to be honest. It's a beautiful car. So I love that pairing. I think they look so Yeah, nice I do. Them, yeah. Um, and then we get to probably my favourite car of the moment, actually. Really? The AMG GT Black Series. Um, this has been a bit of a, well, a labour of love even for a new car, yeah. to be as it is, because I was adamant if I get a GT Black Series, I should be lucky enough to get the allocation and so forth after having had the regular GTR, the Pro, yes. the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the SLS Black. I was adamant that if I should get one, it was going to be in this colour, solar beam yellow. And not only did Mercedes in the UK say no custom colours on a GT Black Series, really? but okay. they've also stopped painting solar beam full stop. Wow. Other than the AMG one. <laughs> so that meant that the only way to do this was a full respray of it. Oh. So I took my brand new 700 mile GT Black Series and went and fully sprayed it. But I tell you what, we've now done nearly 3,000 miles on it. It's running very well. It's a bit messy right now. It's, crazy it's used, you know, yeah. that's what it was designed for. You see it's, it's good does. to see that. But you know, we also bumped the power on it. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a just what still. Yeah. To mere 850 horsepower. Which is absolutely ridiculous. But it's actually quite comfortable as well. You know, as you're looking inside, you've got all the AMG GT creature comforts. You've yeah. got all the infotainment, and I really like the seating position in the car. You can do long journeys in it. It's got a decent amount of space in the back. It's like... It's quite practical. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like this perfect balance of a car that you can take on a massive road trip or daily drive or whatever it is. Yeah. But also... You can go to a racetrack and you can set lap records. You know, the GT Black yeah, Series yeah. is the factory production car with the lap record at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Um, it's a serious, serious, serious weapon. And obviously that comes thanks in part to all of this and the mad aero that it has. And yeah. In fact, one thing that's quite fun, because of how big this wing is and how much downforce it creates and how the car was originally made with the boot lift, so the yep. spoiler being attached to the boot lift, means that if they hadn't have done any additional strengthening of the boot lid, it would effectively have crushed itself. Really? Let me just pop it open very quickly. I'll show you. They had to put in the back of here these extra support struts oh my God, into that. the boot to make sure that it can handle the amount of downforce. Wow. And obviously the extra strength from the full carbon fiber boot lid as well. Yeah. Um, it's all these like funny things that you start learning when you look and, <laughs> and it gives you a sense of what this car is about. It comes with some adjustable camber plates and all sorts oh, of things. Oh, amazing. Like, you know, the stuff that <laughs> you want to set it yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Completely correctly. And then you have uh, an extendable splitter out of the front that has these um, supporting pieces which are holding in place. God. Um, proper, proper track weapon. I mean, all of these are track weapons. Yeah. This is, for me, the car, I guess, at the moment. The only problem, Cup 2R tyres. Cup 2R tyres need temperature. On um, cold winter's days... They're not really that good. No. Uh, you need to get some heat into them and it's impossible on the road. Yeah. You need to properly be on track and even then it takes a few laps. Um, yeah, and in theory, the space we're currently standing in is where the SLS would be. Yes. But I'm sad to say that's not here right <laughs> it's now. It's not here. <laughs> what we do have instead is this colossal pile of stuff. <laughs> Wheels... <laughs> Tires, body parts from cars, bumpers, wings, doors, carbon fibre, seats, exhausts. It's like, 
Wow. <laughs> it's just all the, the stuff that gets accumulated over the years. I mean, the collection is, I guess, now 17 cars, and cars come with, with stuff. stuff. That's right, um, yeah. Whether it's winter tyres, whether it's a second set of wheels and tyres, you know, I've got a, a new set of uh, GT Black Series wheels and tyres here. Oh, wow. Because I knew that they'll go fast with my usage, so yeah. the second set is a no-brainer. We can just swap them over here. Some Ferrari wheels there as well. Yes, nice. still got some of those lurking <laughs> around from the old days. Some, some bits that will go at some point. Yeah. Um, and then you get up to the exhaust, like... Oh, we've got Clio, Clio headlights. Oh, amazing, they're still there. <laughs> um, another exhaust from the C63 Black Series. My GT4 exhaust from JCR that we took off. Crikey. The original sound system parts from the SLS. and the wow, boxes. loads of stuff. stuff. Um, rear seat delete we did on the Yaris. Took that out. And then just, you know, cool things. This is the fun part of having a garage, right? We picked these up recently online. Um, they just look cool. They do look cool. That's the kind of thing I'm really excited about filling yeah this garage. absolutely like you know, just just lights and display <laughs> and things, random stuff and then we get to the clear which is i think for many the surprise in the collection right yeah absolutely i mean <laughs> i had a clear back in the day one of these one yeah two. yeah amazing phase two i should say this is a good old 1.2 liter 72 73 horsepower yeah, do, isn't it? <laughs> so the, the story actually is that my first ever car that I had when I was 17 was, was identical one of the, yeah. to this, um, which I do actually own, but I own ah, it as okay. a lump of scrap metal. Ah, So okay. it got written off at the start of last year. Yeah. And before we were able to actually purchase the crashed car to try, because we were tracking it down and trying to find it. They already we squished it. it up, it got squished. Ah. And I, we asked the scrapyard if we could have the lump of metal and bought that off them and now we don't really know what we're doing with it. But <laughs> in addition to that, I picked up an identical car and the idea is to do something a bit fun and make it into a bit of a sleeper. Cool. Stick a 182 engine in it. Oh, that'd be good, yeah. Keep yeah. it looking like this. Absolutely, yeah. I've looking. had a few cars like that myself in the past and you know, it's so much fun to drive. Yes. You can surprise a lot of people. And it weighs nothing, it's tiny, right? Yeah, yeah. And then to make it fun, that is actually the plate that I had on my original oh, that's video. pretty cool. You got that same one. Same color, same spec, same everything. Same, like down to the option, down to auto lights and wipers and the sunroof. Re it's wow. Exactly the okay, same that's design. that's good. Yeah. So, assist the car. Uh, <laughs> you could say. So this is kind of the hatchback line because then we have the Focus RS Heritage, and a lot of people don't get why I'd have the Focus RS in the collection, but obviously I've got this Ford thing going yep. on the GT, the GT500, and I love that supercar, muscle car, hot hatch, and the Heritage is really special. They only made fifty of them. Oh, wow. In total. Um, values shot through the roof. I've done 6,000 miles or so with this. It's not you know, done zero. Yes, I yeah. drive it a lot, but it's a really cool thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoy driving it, and it looks so nice. It's like <laughs> it a bright orange. And I had a blue RS and then a red RS that was a big project, and now the Heritage. So for me, that's like a car that, you know, it's going to hang around for the long term. It's yeah. Just a fun thing to have. Um, the GR Yaris would be here, but it's yep. currently out, hence the mud on the ground, so we might be taking it around <laughs> fields and things. Um, <laughs> it's normally found there. I've got the, obviously the new M3. I've not driven this anything nearly as much as I thought I would, in part because I've done so many miles during the same time with the Taycan. Right, okay. I probably thought I would use this more than I have and use the Taycan less. Um, not that there's really, let's say, anything wrong with it. It just doesn't grab at my heartstrings in the way that some of the other cars okay. do. So, it's a lovely colour. Yeah, Isle of Man Green. I really like how it looks in terms of the colour. This, this is the base yeah. ball. People still fight about that. Um, it's a good car for the team from time to time. And, you know, if we're heading out with multiple people, it does the job. And it is especially loud. With the what sort exhaust. of horsepower is it? Uh, stock is 510. I guess we're up a tiny bit with the exhaust, yeah. but not a huge change. Then the GTR Roadster would normally be there. The C63 Black Series, so completing my Black Series trio, the GT, the SLS, and the C63. That was something I always really wanted to do and, and you know, dreamt that if I could get the GT Black, how cool would it be if yeah. I had the SLS and the C? Um, and we did the Black Series tour over to Mercedes, which was incredible fun with all of those. Um, this is also a little bit shouty. It's quite, quite <laughs> how different the three cars are. The GT is like the track obliterator. Yeah. The SLS is kind of this really dynamic GT car. And the C63 is this 
that say antisocial, like noisy, <laughs> boisterous. Thing. We like that. Though. And I tell you what's fascinating: so many people come here and they go to this car. Really? The W two hundred four C sixty threes are just. It's a car from an era, right? Yeah. It's a car that so many of us loved or aspired to and you know, stood out and just thought it was awesome. And the Black Series is the ultimate iteration of that and I was adamant to find one with the Aero kit. Really hard to track down with a factory carbon fiber Aero okay. kit. Okay. But hey, if I can find a car with a wing, I'll take one <laughs> with a wing. You've you noticed in this garage at all. <laughs> yeah, I did actually. <laughs> Seems to be kind of a thing. Um, Next car, very personal car, is the Aston GT8. Now, maybe I'll explain this the other way around, because this is technically where it began. With the right, okay. Monster. This was the first car that I ever called the Schmiemobile. And when I say the oh. Schmiemobile, the audience called the Schmiemobile. The Schmiemobile, yeah. I bought it back in 2010. Um, I had had on my YouTube channel already at that point my 1 Series, 123D, and an Audi S5 that I had then got instead of that. I bought this as a bit of a leap into the unknown. Didn't really know where things were going to go. Yeah. It was the first car I shared on the channel. It was the first wow. car I took on road trips. The first video I ever made on my channel talking to a camera was driving this car. This car. I did then sell it two years later. Um, so I sold the car two years later, having done 20,000 miles with it. Um, and went into an R8 V10 Spider, which was yes, a big upgrade the, yeah, at the time. Yeah, I remember that one. And, um, you know... Forgot, I mean, never really forgot, yeah. but, but moved onwards from the Vantage. But after complete radio silence for nine months, the car basically refound me earlier <laughs> this year. And um, yeah, I said, it's got to be done. Really. It's got to be done, yeah. I spoke to the owner, took it for a test drive, and you know, he, he made an offer, and I said, sure, done. So what I was going to say about that is, obviously, this was, for me, it was my first really exciting car, my first proper sports car. Yeah. My first like entry into going on rallies and to cool events and to being able to have some kind of understanding of the supercar world. Yeah, of course. So a bit of a no brainer. And again, it's also back on the same number plate that I had it on back when I owned it before. Oh, that's nice. But it was because of having had that history that when Aston out announced this kind of last hurrah to the V8 Vantage yeah. of this generation, the GTA is only 150 of them, it was a very easy decision for me like this has mm. to be done and they made it super special because we did a whole road to gt8 video series so i literally filmed this car being built i filmed these body panels being painted oh, that's i filmed cool. it being yeah. assembled i filmed the interior stitching being done wow I, God. I was the one so when it reached the end of the production line in gaden this is crazy to say when it like as it rolled to the very end and they sit in the car and start it yeah they let me do that that's cool. The first time this engine ever started in this car. Was you. Was <laughs> <laughs> Which is really cool. This one's quite loud, isn't it? It's just a little bit loud. <laughs> it's like small, small noise. I've got to start walking into door mirrors. I keep doing that. <laughs> and then we have, while we're over in this corner, the two visitors at the moment, uh, the Gunther Works 993. Which is a pretty special thing. Yeah, this is a very special car, isn't it? Looks cool, really, really nice. Very, very expensive as well. Lurking under the cover next to it is a Novatec 812 Ooh. GTS, which is a car <laughs> I love, but maybe there'll be one in the collection at some point. Oh, I hope so. I'd love it to I really hope so. Then, just over this way at the moment, obviously, the Taycan, which, like I say, I've driven, I drive a lot. It's my daily to get to and from the garage to home. Um, if I ever need to go into central London, it's the default choice. Obviously, right now, there are lots of perks of driving an EV. Yeah, of course. And being a Turbo S, it's also stupidly fast. What horsepower is it? 760. Wow. But it's that instant torque, right? Yeah, just, absolutely. If you want to get from 0 to 50 or 60, whatever the speed limit is, off a traffic light. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the one. You're going to be out in front. And then, the slightly different daily, obviously, the practical beast is the G-Wagon. See, I absolutely love G-Wagons. Yeah. I've always loved G-Wagons. So, I never thought... I would grow to love it as much as I have. I've had it for two and a half years. Yeah. When I, when I bought it, I never thought I would have it for that long. Mm. I thought I was just kind of trialing it, trialing it out, trial and error and see what I yeah. think of it. Two and a half years later, the times that I use this car, I, I can't imagine anything else that no. would do what I do with it. Um, yes, of course, there are SUVs that can pull trailers and there are plenty of cars with as good practicality. Yes. Yeah. The way it mixes this kind of, there's a bit of style to it. Inside. Absolutely. It's a cool yeah. thing. Um, so even though it's technically parked closest to the EV charger, it's definitely not electric. It's definitely not, <laughs> no. Anti-electric. Yeah. 40 V8 with 730 horsepower. Oh, God. Um, yeah, so a bit of a 
bit of a monster, really. Um, yeah, at some point in time, I guess some of the others will be back. The Yaris, yeah. the Roadster, the SLS, and the GT500 is in the US. I bought it out in Miami earlier this year. Yeah. Did a lot of miles driving across the USA with it, and eventually it will come back here, which will be really cool as well. But we've got, you know, a lot going on even just beyond this. Like yeah, of course. Here, for example, this is where we have the sim for the Remus GT3 Championship. Uh, we've got that set up. We've got the Sega Rally arcade machine. <laughs> we've got a traffic light just because what well, garage doesn't need a traffic light right do you know what i've, I've actually got one of those as well do you yeah amazing. <laughs> amazing and then we've got i know it's slightly weird considering the cars and the garage but our lovely gazebos i love the gazebo it space. is brilliant <laughs> it's like it was like the easiest solution for a temporary warm yeah. place to have a desk because the long-term plan as you can loosely see from the markings on the floor here is that this is going to be built up into an office. So this will be a lovely lounge with glass walls. Nice, brilliant. It'll be what we're calling the halo space down here. To yep. have like the latest car under some nice lights. Then we'll have toilets and kitchen and stuff. And then upstairs will be the offices with a view and a mezzanine to have the view over the whole I mean, looking down on this lot, it's going to yeah. be a view to die for, isn't it? It's, and it's a minute, you know. The cars over to the left, will, there'll be a, a series of uh, lifts going in over there. So okay, so you'll have them sort of stacked up, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, the idea is that longer term, we have 30 odd cars in here. Oh, wow. So a little bit of future proofing. Yeah, goodness me, come on. <laughs> Just wow. at the moment, it's that colourful explosion. <laughs> you know, when I, whenever I show that I'm doing whatever spec it is, you know, the Lambo or the Ford GT or something, whenever I show that these are the colours I've gone for, yeah. on its own, I think people look at it and they're like, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> but then you see it like this and you see everything and you see how you have the full spectrum, the pink, the purple, it the just blue, comes together, doesn't green. it? It just looks yeah. so good. Yellows, orange, reds. Yeah. Very few grayscale cars. A couple, <laughs> but not many. You see the Clio, a bit of an exception. Yeah. You don't really make C63 Black Series in many colours. They're pretty much all white and black. Yeah. A couple of red ones, but... Um, yeah. Glistening paints, lovely paints. I always like looking at the... It's just the colour of this one, it just jumps out at you, doesn't it? It's... When, they, when they pulled the cover off at Lamborghini Pangborn and I saw it for the first time, yeah. it was one of those moments of OMFG. Yeah, like, yeah, have I, absolutely. Have I done this? Is yeah. this actually mine? <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I okay? Did I buy a Lamborghini in this ridiculous colour? <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you can appreciate it on camera, but it, it, it just, same, you know, it? it's just so nice. <laughs> Multi-layer, it's a triple layer paint as well. Wow. Yeah. Are we able to have a listen to it? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we Is can that grab okay? some keys yeah. and get something started up. Ooh. Skip ahead a moment. We've got some car keys. Where are we going to begin? <laughs> oh, where should we start? Where should we start? <laughs> Do you know what? I'll let you choose. Well, long story short, we've got the STO, as we promised, yep. because it sounds great. We've got the Ford GT, because I was telling you how that's actually one of the loudest cars yeah. in the collection. The GT8, which starts up with the most tremendous bark and the Senna, just because it's the Senna. It's probably the quietest. Is it? it genuinely is. It looks the most ridiculous. But a lot of people actually said to me, why don't I stick an aftermarket exhaust on it? Yeah. But it's a track car, which means mm. track sound. Yeah, it's pointless. Which yeah. means if you make it really loud, you can't, you can't use it. Track. Yeah. And the only point in this car is to track it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, fun thing, actually. Before I started, so I keep finding things to talk about. <laughs> Triple exhaust on European centers. In other regions, they have a twin exhaust because this effectively has an additional muffler. Oh, um, okay. It's a titanium system with some Inconel, I think, in the pipes. But basically, for European sound regulations, because it was in this interim period pre OPFs, but when yeah. regulations meant they had to get quieter, there's an additional muffler. So it's a little bit wow. more silent on a European spec center than an American one. You could fit an American exhaust on a European one, but the triple pipes look cooler. They do look cool. They look really cool. Right. Um, I can do this without even getting in the car. <laughs> nice oh, brilliant. Are you ready? I'm ready.
<laughs> it's a very powerful sound. Yeah, it is, yeah. Not, not crazy loud. Whereas if I start the Ford GT with its little V6, remember, with the haters <laughs> from GT, GT, you'll be like, wait a second. What's that, going on there? Yeah, this is actually quite loud. But this is where PPF saves the day, because the door has PPF and the mirror has PPF. So Ooh, yeah, so needs I can to be. do a, a gentle rest. Ooh. Don't watch, don't watch. Don't <laughs> I watch. can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need some ear defenders? It's so interesting. No, it's not that. This sounds good, isn't it? Right, ready? Go. Oh, wow. That's when you can tell it's cold in here. Over, that's a V6 in there. Yeah. It's just we wow. Go with the V10, oh, <laughs> up to the uh, big one. I've been juggling all these keys. So, this is a funny one because it doesn't have an OPF. Somehow, Lamborghini got away without fitting an OPF on the STO, but they have had to give it a valve control. So, on the cold, oh, okay, start, okay. it keeps the valves closed. Right, okay, that's so interesting. You don't get a really loud noise until it's warm. And then when it's warm, it opens up. They open up and it sounds much better. Wow. Quite unusual. Try this one. I love that car. That I absolutely cool. love that car. That is the my favourite. The next in our key shop is many of you know, my subscribers' favourite, the Aston GT8. And factory titanium exhaust. I have no idea how this is homologated. Really? Like, no idea. <laughs> as you're about to hear. Oh, this, God. You're used to loud aftermarket exhaust, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, this is like a really loud aftermarket exhaust, except it's from the factory. And that's Oof. what doesn't make sense about it. But you'll see exactly what I mean, but just a second. <laughs> when I start this up... I'm actually a little bit nervous so sitting here. Let me... Are you ready? I'm ready. It's just 
not possible. <laughs> how, how did they get those to be delivered like that? This stuff makes sense, doesn't it? That is just wow. Oh my god. ringing now. <laughs> yeah. I, I just find that car. It's the last of the old school. Yeah. Like, it's only five years old, but it sounds that good and <sighs> it drives like it's 10 yeah. years old, which means it's more emotional, means you're more connected to it. Yeah. It's a nice kind of like, when you go around the whole garage, I've got a good mix of manuals, different yeah, engine layouts, absolutely. configurations, cylinders. A bias towards V8s, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There are a lot of cars with V8s. But, um, yeah, cool things. Absolutely. Things. Very noisy. Everything <laughs> apart from the Taycan is noisy. Because the G63 has to be a Krakovich. The STO has that. This has to be a Krakovich. Senna is fairly quiet. The 675 actually sounds better than the Senna. Does it really? Yeah, genuinely. Oh, God. Um, GT Black Series has been to Opus. So that has their... Um, system and cat replacements, yeah. etc. Focus is stock, but sounds good anyway. Yeah. M3 is Remus. C63 is like partially decat. GT8 is stupid. Vantage Roadster is just what it is. And then we've got the Gunther Works and the Novatec 812. Now the 812 is probably going to be the loudest one in here, it isn't is. it? it is. <laughs> like, on another start, level. Yeah, if we started, do we need to start it now? <laughs> if we might have to. <laughs> Thank you to the owner. I think, um, <laughs> yeah, we might be, yeah, starting the, yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to help you get the cover off? Uh, we won't do the whole thing. Oh, it's such a beautiful car, isn't it? Look at it. It is a lovely, lovely thing. Obviously, 6.5 litre NA V12. Cover is a bit coarse on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get this off. <laughs> but... One of the best cars. Wow. Right, let's make sure those exhaust tailpipes are uncovered. Yeah. So, exhaust from my friends at Novatec. I'm okay, very close yeah. with those guys. I go out and visit quite a lot. Yeah. And they know how to make a very cool exhaust system. And we won't rev it or anything. No, 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 no. Just starting the car. Yeah. It, it's a different, <laughs> it's a different league of sound. It would help if I unlocked it. <laughs> and I don't mean the beep beep. I mean, the noise that's coming in just a moment. Oh, my God. I'm actually quite scared. Yeah, do be. Especially if you're standing that close. Really? Oh, God. I'm going to stand back a little bit. Right. So. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> I've got a finger in one of my ears. You probably need it. Okay. Three. Two. Oh, God. One. the most loudest ridiculous car I've ever heard. I'm, I'm speechless. It's, a, it's an insane noise. <sighs> totally insane noise. Absolutely wow. I, I don't even... I think we've set some alarm somewhere off. I can hear something beeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure what. It's gone. What an absolute weapon. Yeah. Does anybody ever need a car that sounds that loud? Well, no. no. <laughs> and petrol heads, do we want a car that sounds that loud? Yeah. 
absolutely yes. <laughs> oh my god. It's just it's from another planet. It really is. Otherworldly. Get this on properly. Tuck back away. Nobody would know that there's this noisy beast under here. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> that must be like, I mean, driving that down the motorway, surely that just must blow well, you your head off, you know? So you, can, you can hush it up. You can press the buttons and protect your ears a bit and the ears of everyone else. But when it runs the cold start, the cause of it being the massive V12, yeah. it just goes full open. Yeah. Full, yeah, full pelt. Super cool. I love having that as a visitor. It's very fun to <laughs> occasionally take a listen. Yeah, so a big thanks to the owner of the car for Yeah, thank you very allowing much. Allowing us to listen to this heaven. Wow. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know what to say. I really don't. I mean, this has just blown me away. Well, thank you so much for letting me come here. My pleasure. Film this. You know, it's been an absolute dream come true. It really has, you know. Um, Playing with some cool... Different stuff. Yeah, yeah. Clean and tidy and shiny <laughs> stuff. Not the usual rusty <laughs> shit that I look around. <laughs> right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Please go and check out the Instagram, which is the Beard Explorer underscore. And also go and check out the Facebook page. Like always, I put all the pictures on Facebook, telling the best of Instagram. I'll link Tim Schmee in the description below too. And I'll see you on the next Explore scene.